Zach Bryan is a rising star in country music, but he's also hiding a secret. Zach eloped during COVID with a woman named Rose Madden, but they aren't married anymore. A lot of people are wondering why, and the truth behind Zach's divorce will shock you. Zach is a US Navy veteran. He served from 2013 until 2021. He got discharged from the Navy in October 2021. And according to Zach, he got discharged for a shocking reason. Although Zach said it was an honorable discharge and that he would never have left the Navy, his superior officers apparently discharged him so that he could go play some music. In 2017, Zach started putting his music on YouTube. His performances weren't exactly high tech. Zach's friends recorded him using an iPhone. That might not sound impressive, but Zach's song, Heading South, eventually went viral. Then in 2019, he released a debut album titled Deanne dedicated to his late mom. Zach recorded the album in an Airbnb in Florida, and some tracks even got picked up for big streaming shows like Yellowstone. In 2020, Zach recorded a second album titled Elizabeth. His studio for that project was a repurposed barn behind his home in Washington State. In April 2021, Zach debuted at the Grand Ole Opry. He got signed to Warner Records, and Zach's major label debut was released in May 2022. Zach's album, American Heartbreak, hit number five on Billboard. It had the biggest first week for a country album in 2022. But as Zach's country music career took off, he also seemed to have taken off his wedding ring. Zach has removed all traces of his former wife, Rose, from his social media, but pictures of their stunning mountaintop elopement have been located online. Their divorce was so incredibly secretive that it left the internet wanting more. Rose's full name is Elizabeth Rose Madden. Maybe that's why Zach called his second album Elizabeth. Rose met Zach when he was making music in the Navy barracks. Rose was in the Navy too. And while they shared the same military career, Rose was also super supportive of Zach's music. She often appeared in Zach's homegrown music videos, and she even sang backup on Zach's rough tracks. If you found the website of the photographer who took breathtaking photos of their elopement, you'd learn more about Zach and Rose's love story. According to the couple's write-up on the website, Zach and Rose were a true testament to marriage, an example of how far two people were willing to go to prove their love to one another. When Zach and Rose got engaged, COVID had not struck yet. At first, Zach and Rose had wanted to elope in Banff National Park. That's a gorgeous mountain location in Calgary, Canada. But when the pandemic hit and the borders closed down, Rose and Zach were forced to postpone their wedding. At least, that's what they were supposed to do. Apparently, Zach and Rose refused to take no for an answer. They began to search everywhere in the continental U.S. for a location as beautiful as Banff. Finally, they settled on Glacier National Park in Montana. They began to plan their Montana elopement with wedding vendors in the area. Anyone who's planned a wedding, let alone a destination wedding, knows that's a lot of work. But Zach and Rose figured everything was set. They were even finalizing the contracts with all their vendors. But then, a shocking twist happened that threatened to cancel their Montana wedding too. Zach and Rose were still enlisted in the Navy, and the Department of Defense issued travel restrictions to all active duty personnel. Zach and Rose could not travel outside a 350 mile radius from their naval base on a place called Wid Bay Island. But the wedding location they'd chosen in Montana was almost twice as far. Rose and Zach began a desperate search for a third venue within their limited travel area. Finally, they found it, and it was so close, it was shocking. In Leavenworth, Washington, there's a spot called Colcutt Lake. It's only 150 miles away from where Zach and Rose lived. And this was when Rose found Brady Bates. He was their wedding photographer, and he wrote a lengthy wedding day story about Zach and Rose to accompany their elopement pictures on his site. According to Brady, it was an 11 mile trek uphill to reach Zach and Rose's ceremony spot on their wedding. Brady's wedding write-up included the intimate details about Zach and Rose's wedding day by a mountain lake. He also included a funny pre-wedding glitch that happened to Rose. The evening before they eloped, Zach and Rose met up with Brady at a local grocery store. They were only supposed to be at the store to gather snacks for the long hike the next day. But as soon as Rose entered the grocery store, she noticed a florist section and she freaked. Rose realized that she'd forgotten to book a new florist for her third wedding location. According to Brady's website, Rose has a passion for floral design. She even talked to Brady about opening her own flower shop one day. So Rose bought leftover flowers at the grocery store for her bridal arrangement and Zach and Rose camped out the night before their elopement in the grocery store parking lot. It wasn't like Zach had a big RV either. He owned a 1988 Ford Bronco. And that's where Zach and Rose spent the night before their wedding. They obviously didn't get much sleep, but not for the reason you'd think. Zach and Rose were afraid of sleeping through an alarm on their phones. So they stayed up that night watching scary movies, eating candy, and chucking coffee. They were supposed to be up at 3 a.m. and they ended up leaving at 3.15 a.m. for the long journey up to the summit where they would say their vows. Rose sat in the back of the Bronco while Zach drove. Brady was with them, taking pictures of Rose making her wedding bouquet. Rose had to do that while Zach was up front navigating potholes up the Curdy Mountain Road. By the time Zach reached the parking lot on top of the mountain, there was still a five mile hike to reach the top of Alpine Lake. Zach, Rose, and Brady hiked up more than 2,200 feet in elevation. 
they finally reached the summit. And according to Brady's website, Zach and Rose had just enough time to change for their son's wedding. Zach and Rose exchanged custom rings and handwritten vows while Brady took spectacular pictures. And after they were pronounced husband and wife, Rose did something shocking. She jumped into a frigid glacier-fed lake in her wedding dress. After changing into dry clothes, the small group hiked back down the trailhead. They enjoyed a private wedding picnic and a newlywed toast. Because of COVID, they were forced to hold a backyard reception two weeks after their wedding. Apparently, Rose and Zach had an amazing sounding cake at their reception. It featured two tiers with their favorite flavors. One tier was dark chocolate with sour cherries, and the second tier was lemon with blueberry mousse. It was decorated with realistic looking sugar flowers and eucalyptus and rosemary stems. Zach and Rose's backyard reception occurred on a five acre rural property in Washington state. Rose wanted a bohemian reception, and the small group of friends and family who were invited pitched in to make it happen. Zach and Rose went to local thrift stores for seats and tableware. His family cooked the reception meal, and Rose ordered flowers from a wholesaler and designed the table arrangements. And everyone got together to handcraft an arbor, light posts, and tables using Home Depot lumber. Vintage string lights were hung up to add a golden glow. Zach and Rose also decided to place disposable cameras around the reception. They asked guests to take intimate pictures of the reception to be cherished later. And Zach had a precious memory of his late mother on hand too. He displayed a copy of his first album, Deanne, and he put out markers for each guest to sign the album like a guest book. Brady later described Zach and Rose's backyard reception as a night to remember. He also said that their story was one that all in attendance would never forget. I know Brady meant that in the best way, but it sounds kind of crazy now, especially since Zach has wiped every trace of Rose from his social media. He's been featured in prominent media outlets, including two articles in the New York Times in September and October of 2022. And while the media has written about Zach being born in Japan or that he nabbed a Grammy Award nomination this early in his music career, no one in the industry is talking about his short-lived failed marriage. But there are places online where regular people go to hash this stuff out, and many of them are Reddit communities. Take this with a grain of salt. One Reddit user posted a shocking revelation in August 2021. According to this anonymous user, Zach and Rose's marriage was basically over by January 2021. Allegedly, after their wedding, Rose got redeployed in November 2020. Zach was not communicating with her, and he allegedly cheated on her when she was deployed. Reportedly, it was Zach who wanted to break up, and he supposedly did that in an absolutely heartless way. The unidentified Reddit user claimed that Zach texted Rose and said he didn't want to be married anymore. This user also said that Zach complained to Rose that she wasn't supporting his music career. Considering everything Rose did to help Zach's career before he got signed to a major label, I feel like that's a terrible thing for him to say. Although we obviously don't know if he actually said that or not, Rose apparently refused to sign the divorce paper until she returned home in May 2021. Shortly after her return, Zach moved out of their house for good. Rose allegedly posted shocking revenge messages on Twitter and Instagram. She supposedly wrote that Zach was a narcissist who harmed her mentally and physically. But Rose's revenge posts seemed to have disappeared too. And if it wasn't for Brady's photography website, we probably wouldn't know that Zach and Rose were married at all. But what do you guys think? What do you think about Zach's crazy elopement? And what do you make of his shocking divorce from Rose? Did you know about all this?